Hey there, today I'm going to talk about livestock production system. Alright, let's begin. So livestock can be considered as a production system and is divided into the following. Inputs, outputs, and the market. So inputs, this would include uh, things that we provide for animal health like uh, vaccines, medicines. It also includes animals which are the unit of production as well as feed that we provide our animals and labor. So outputs, they are the products derived from animals. Okay. So waste, they are also outputs but they are negative outputs and uh, are not utilized and produce pollution. So the market, the market utilizes the products and sets the price to the producer. Without a market that consumes, it would not make sense to increase production or expand the production system. Okay, so a livestock production system regards domestic animals as a resource. Okay, a resource because they uh, provide us with a uh, source of food, skin, manure, and uh, labor as well as uh, animal byproducts. Okay. A livestock production system is also a, a set of conditions or techniques that allow animals to be bred or animal byproducts to be produced in ways which are of course aligned with a farmer's goal of uh, production as well as the uh, limits that the farmer set for himself. Okay, so the livestock production system, this was uh, originally created as a basis for uh, the environmental impact assessment by the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization. Okay. It tries to determine the effect of uh, livestock production systems to the environment. Okay, here is a uh, diagram of livestock production systems. Okay. It is further divided into two. There is the solely livestock production systems, okay, which we will identify as uh, L, and then mixed farming systems, which uh, we will identify as M. Okay, under solely livestock production, we have two classifications, uh, landless livestock production system and uh, grassland-based livestock production system. Let's uh, first go to uh, landless uh, livestock production systems. Underneath, we have uh, monogastrix as well as uh, ruminant. Okay, then uh, grassland-based, okay, we have uh, temperate zones and tropical highlands. Okay, humid, subhumid uh, tropics and subtropics. Okay, arid, semi-arid tropics and subtropics. Okay, now we go to um, mixed farming systems. Under mixed farming systems, we have uh, two classes, rain-fed and irrigated. Okay, under rain-fed, there's uh, temperate zones and tropical highlands, humid, subhumid tropics and subtropics, arid, semi-arid tropics and uh, subtropics. Now for irrigated, we have uh, temperate zones and uh, tropical highlands, humid, subhumid tropics, there's also arid and uh, semi-arid tropics. Okay, let's uh, first talk about the uh, solely livestock system. Okay, one of the major classifications of uh, livestock production systems. Okay, here, rangelands, pastures, annual forages provide more than 90% of dry matter fed to animals. Okay. So non-livestock farming activities comprise less than 10% of the total value of production. Okay. Alright, so the landless livestock production system. This is a uh, subclassification under solely livestock systems. Okay, less than 10% of the dry matter fed to animals is uh, from the farm. The annual average stocking rates are above 10 livestock units per hectare of uh, agricultural land. Okay, so uh, if you don't have an idea yet, this would be um, your feedlot. Okay, feedlot. Okay, 
two types of uh, landless livestock production systems are landless monogastric and the landless ruminant system. Okay, so for landless monogastric, value of the production of the uh, pig or poultry enterprise is higher than that of the ruminant enterprises. Meaning you have more pigs and poultry over cows. Okay, landless ruminant systems, value of production of the ruminants is higher than that of the pig or poultry enterprise. Which means you have more ruminants than pigs or poultry. Okay, now uh, we go to grassland-based systems. This is uh, a subclass of uh, solely livestock systems. And uh, more than 10% of the dry matter is produced by the farm. The annual average stocking rates are uh, less than 10 uh, live units per hectare of uh, agricultural land. Examples here are temperate and tropical highland, referred to as LGT, humid, subhumid tropics and subtropics, referred to as LGH, arid, semi-arid tropics and subtropics, referred to as LGA. Okay, now we go back to um, the diagram. Okay, uh, We're done with uh, solely livestock production. Uh, as well as its subclasses of landless and uh, grassland based. Okay, now we move on to uh, mixed farming systems. Here we'll uh, discuss the rain fed, okay, as well as the uh, irrigated livestock production system. Okay, so first mixed farming systems. More than 10% of the dry matter comes from crop byproducts, stubble, or more than 10% of the total value of production comes from non-livestock farming activities okay so for rain fed under the mixed farming systems this has 90% uh, of the value of non-livestock farm production it comes from uh, rain fed land use including the following classes okay. temperate and tropical highland referred to as MRT humid subhumid tropics and subtropics MRH Arid, semi-arid tropics, and subtropics, referred to as MRA. Okay, now under uh, irrigated mixed farming systems, this is uh, a subclass of mixed farming systems, wherein more than 10% of the value of uh, non-livestock farm production comes from irrigated land use, okay, which includes temperate and tropical highland, referred to as MIT, Humid, subhumid tropics, and subtropics, referred to as MIH. Arid, semi-arid tropics, and subtropics, referred to as MIA. Alright. Now uh, we move on to uh, livestock classification. Okay. Here we have intensive versus intensive. So what's the difference? Intensive production of small acreage with a high stocking rate. Example, in an irrigated pasture, in feedlots, fattening barns, chicken battery houses, uh, animal flats, as well as dry lots. The extensive livestock production is the, the exact opposite. It utilizes the least input used to raise livestock. Okay, more about intensive livestock production, this is a high input, high output farming. Okay? This uh, includes environment modification to suit the highly specialized uh, genotypes and production systems. Okay, here, productivity is emphasized. Okay? We uh, also provide high energy feed to the animals. Okay? And then feeding, it's uh, considerably above the uh, maintenance for all of their productive lives. Okay. Labor inputs may be minimal due to uh, automation. Okay. This would be uh, seasonal or total confinement for the animals. Okay. Here, this disease prevention is uh, important and it focuses on supplying animal products all year round. Okay, so how is it different from uh, extensive? So extensive, all animal production adapted to uh, the existing environment. Whatever environment you have, okay, your animals have to adapt. Survival of these animals are emphasized rather than productivity. 
There is modest to considerable human activity. There are uh, none or very few purchase inputs. Animals are fed near or only marginally above maintenance requirements for uh, their entire life. And uh, products are only available during certain seasons. Okay, so uh, what are the subsets under extensive or what could be considered as uh, extensive livestock? We have pastoralism, subsistence farming, and ranching. So pastoralism, this is practiced by nomads okay, with large migratory herds and flocks over communal lands. Name is input to uh, control animal movement over the large areas. Vaccinations may be uh, occasionally provided if the government mandates it. The focus here would be survival rather than uh, producing for a market. Okay. Pa uh, pastoralism follows natural cycles and uh, products are only limited to certain seasons. Subsistence farming, this is uh, usually scavenge based, held on communal land composed of uh, mixed farming with uh, small numbers of pigs, poultry, and small ruminants. Okay, sources of feed are crop byproducts, residues, and kitchen waste. There would be occasional vaccinations if the government uh, mandates it and also if it uh, is sponsored by the government. Okay, this type of farming also follows natural cycles and uh, it's more in survival rather than uh, producing for the market. Okay, so sufficient food production is the motivation to satisfy the needs of uh, an extended family group. And then any surplus uh, in the products, these may be sold or uh, traded with uh, other families. Now uh, we move on to uh, the last one, ranching under extensive, characterized by large herds of cattle or sheep on communal land following natural cycles for reproduction. There is uh, minimal human labor input. Okay. Uh, here, they uh, provide occasional supplemental feed, disease treatment or prevention, and predator control. This is uh, more commercially oriented and uh, there is a higher capital investment needed. Okay. As compared to uh, the extensive raising of cows and their calves or yearling animals on grasslands, okay, a uh, finishing stage in feedlots would be intensive all right that's it hope you learned a lot about uh, livestock production systems